Well, hello there. This is going to be a brief introduction to free and open source software. Here are some of the key points that we'll be going over. What is FOSS software? What are the differences between free software and open source software? And why is this important to us? FOSS software is an all-encompassing term that includes the two major groups of software licenses that generally respect user freedoms in some way or another. The free software group and the open source software group. So what is free software? Free software is the ability to see code. So if I download this program and run it, I should be able to look at the code. Otherwise, it can't be free software. The ability to use the code. Same as above, except I need to be able to, well, use it. The ability to modify the code for personal use. This is a lot of things a lot of companies do not like. Just, well, think back to Sony. They sued the hell out of some guy because, what did he do? He wanted to install something else on his PlayStation, but... Whatever. The ability to modify and redistribute the code for commercial or non-commercial purposes. So basically, free software license give ultimate freedom to the user. So they can take any code they find that that's licensed as some sort of free software license, they can edit it, they can use it for themselves, they can give it to their friends, they can edit it and give it to their friends, or they can do all of the above and sell it. The general purpose behind the free software license is to give the user the greatest control and knowledge of the software running on his or her computer. I just realized I spelled conrol instead of control. Good for me. Okay, so English is kind of limited when it comes to the freedom space. Uh, many times, if you know anything about free software, you've probably heard free is in freedom or free is in free beer. So free beer is, hey, there's an item, you can have it for free. Freedom's freedom means you have the freedom to do something. Why doesn't English have different words for this? I don't know. And the same and a similar issue comes with open source software. Not really a language thing, but bad naming habits. So there's two types of open source software. There's one, the OSS in terms of licensing, and two, OSS in terms of just simply the source code being there for us to look at. So OSS licensing does not necessarily require all the user freedoms that are granted by a free software license. So, for example, the user might be able to look at the code. He, generally, they're able to modify the code for personal use, but a lot of times it's the commercial uses that start getting kind of eh. So it depends on the specific license. I mean, all free software licenses are technically open source licenses, but there's just simply... How, how do I say this? There's a lot of different licenses that fall under each of these groups. And for open source software groups, like the Apache license, which Google uses for Android, allows a lot of freedom to the user, but not necessarily ultimate freedom. And free software goes for ultimate freedom. Open source software goes for basically safety and privacy issues. And if the code breaks, I can fix it issues. So, yeah. The general purpose is to allow users to maintain some control, but does not have to limit commercial viability. Now, the non, the, the not licensed version, all that really is is saying, hey, here's the source code, you can look at it. We generally consider that source available, again, since English is limited. So, no user freedoms are implied, there's no licensing implied. So, if somebody says, here's the source code to my program, and then you go and run it, technically you're in violation of copyright, unless they gave you a license in addition to that. So it, it gets kind of iffy, but generally it's pretty obvious to tell the difference between a place that's, or a company that says, here's the source code for our project, and a company that says, yeah, this is free software, free and open source software, use it. Yeah, it's great. So yeah, it only means that the source code is available for review. So why is this important? Freedom. We'll use the chair analogy. Let's say you buy a wooden kitchen chair. You get a dining room set, you have a wooden chair. And one of the chair legs are a little short. Well, in a non-free world, you wouldn't be allowed to modify it. It would be illegal for you to put a couple of coasters under the chair to make it stop wobbling because you are editing it. This is essentially one of the key issues in software licensing these days. People, y you can't fix it. If it breaks, well, eh, guess your SOL. Oh, are you going to fix it for me? No. You, I know you bought it from us, but guess what? Screw you. Oh, thanks, guys. The next is safety. Um, 
well, there's two different actually. There are actually two different types of safety. One, there's more eyes on the code, so more people can see problems and more problems get fixed before bad guys find them and don't tell anybody about it. But yes, let's go with the malicious intent analogy. This is just a series of analogies here, so bear with me. What we have here is, let's say Windows. Who's to say? Who's to say that Windows isn't spying on us? Windows? It's it's not like there's an FDA or anything like that for the for the software. Nobody's reviewing this code. For all we know, they're stealing our credit card numbers and trying to sell them, and, and selling them to mafia members just to redistribute to other people. That sounds crazy, but we have no idea. We're not allowed to see it, and. That's just one small issue, and a lot of these are related, so, well, this one's not. The next would be the reduction of the have and the have-nots. If you have free software, such as GIMP, anybody can use GIMP and have a photo editing suite. Granted, it's people generally say it's not the same as Adobe Photoshop, but not all of us can afford Adobe Photoshop. No, it's a little cheaper now that it's subscription-based, but still, it stops the have and have-not issue. Anti-government surveillance. Well, there's the whole prism thing. I'm not going to go into detail what it is exactly, but let's just let's gloss over it by saying, hey, Google. The government says, hey, Google, we want to capture all the information you got. And they're like, oh, okay. But we can't see that. We can't know that. A similar things could happen in, well, again, I'll use Windows as an example. They're allegedly part of the prism thing too, but we have no idea what information they're taking from us. What do they have? I don't know. Nobody can review the code. They said they paid somebody to review the code, but pff, they paid them. They're going to say whatever they want them to say. Privacy. Well, yeah, I, I kind of already went into that. Windows could easily be keylogging us and taking our credit card information and selling it to criminals, and we wouldn't know. And there's no way for us to find out. There's a reason why the Russian and the Chinese don't use Windows. They've created their own versions of Linux for their government computers because they know that our federal government has backdoors in the Windows operating system so they would be able to spy on... Well, we, we would be able to spy on Russian and Chinese com uh, computers, and the Russian and the Chinese know this, so they don't use Windows. So this is, it's really important because if only a few people can see the code, then they could be doing illegal or immoral things against us. It's important because if we buy important software and it stops working for some reason, and the company behind it disappears or abandons it, we, or someone, can fix it for us. So the software that we depend on could just disappear one day. And if it's not free software, well, I guess we're SOL. Ah, uh, yes. One of the biggest things that we heard for the longest time, and we still hear today. Here's a fun quote for those who like to defend the government and company surveillance by saying, Well, I've got nothing to hide. So yeah, Glenn Greenwald says this when people, or does this and says this, when people tell him that. I always say the same thing to them. I get out a pen, I write down my email address, I say, here's my email address. What I want you to do when you get home is email me the passwords to all of your email accounts. Not just the nice, respectable work one in your name, but all of them. Because I want to be able to just troll through what it is you're doing online, read what I want to read, and publish whatever I find interesting. After all, if you're not a bad person... And you're doing nothing wrong, you should have nothing to hide. He goes on to say that no one has ever taken him up on that offer. Alright, here's some other potential side effects that a lot of people complain about, but this is similar to the RIAA argument against digital music, but... People say it's harder to make money when you're selling software directly if it's competing with giving it away for free. And that's true. I can't fault that complaint, but there's also other business models. Support contracts are traditionally the way that free software makes money, and nowadays, what with cloud computing and everything, why do we need to have Windows free if we er I mean, why do we ha why can't we have Windows free and then have to pay for updates, right? Oh, I need to get an update. Yeah, sure, they give you security updates, but any feature updates, they could say, "Hey, yeah, 20 bucks a year and we'll give you updates." Not a it still works. It still works. Another issue people say is bad people might be able to exploit the code, but like I said before, more eyes on the code mean more people can find the errors and fix the code. It's true that bad people might exploit it, 
but generally we find out about it quicker, we're able to find out about it quicker, and we can fix it quicker. Hard, and it's also a lot of people also complain that it's harder to protect intellectual property. Well, intellectual property laws are horrible anyway and are beyond the scope of this presentation, but suffice to say that the biggest issue here is trade secrets that are hidden inside code could be released to competitors. Well, maybe we need to change IP laws to be a bit more more like the medicine laws, where, yeah, you got 10 days to recoup your money, and then it gets opened and free, but beyond the scope. Beyond the scope of this presentation. So, what exactly did we go over? We explained what FOSS is, we explained the differences between free and open source software, we explained why it's important for companies to not hide things that we store on our personal fucking devices, we even went over some com common complaints against it. Hopefully, this presentation will encourage the use of and creation of FOSS software and FOSS tools. And that is it. Enjoy!